can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your background? Of course, I'm Alex Neuer. I'm the writer and director of Sound of Violence. Um, I've been a producer for 17 years and after eight years of documentary filmmaking, I delved into the horror genre with a short film called Conductor and now the feature film Sound of Violence. After the short movie Conductor, Sound of Violence is not only your first movie, but also can be seen as the adaptation of this one in a feature film. Please can you tell us which were the main difficulties to transform a short movie in a long feature? It's a, that's a great question. The uh, the uh, when you make when you make uh, a short film, um, it's you know sometimes you make them with the intent of making a feature. In the case of Conductor, I made it as a sort of way to transit between my documentary 808, which was all about a drum machine, and my transition into a horror. So I decided to do a film that would be killing somebody with a drum machine, um, and I did it purely for experimental reason to prove myself that I could also be direct. Um, but also to, to have a bit of fun and to, to experiment with something that uh, was just a light bulb in my head. Um, and it really works as, as a six minute short. We toured it, we had a lot of fun in festivals. We, got, we won awards and we got great feedback and it was like, I was really, really happy. But then when it came to writing the feature, I had to think differently. And so this is where first I tried to include the short, but then I wrote the backstory and, and then I realized that the short film didn't fit into a narrative uh, feature uh, structure. So I took it out and I revisited the whole story as a character piece, as a character thriller with, with uh, strong experimental sides like, like with the short, but with something different. So I, I kind of almost took it apart yeah. and then took a step back and then rebuilt it from scratch. So the, f the feature in a way is inspired by the short more than it is just a longer version of it. What were your main sources of inspiration for Soul of Violence? Some movies, some books? A bit of this, there's a lot, there's a lot. Obviously, as I said, my documentary about the 808 drum machine yes. uh, was a big driving force in my head. Uh, but at the same time, um, in more directly and visual, I would say movies like American Psycho, mm -hmm assassination nation but you know my whole life has been about watching crazy horror movies from the first you know when I was nine and I saw night of the living dead and then I watched evil dead and then you know I went on into all sorts of movies and I just wanted to pay homage to a few films throughout the film um you know there's a, there's homage to battle royale there's homage to uh scanners there's homage to misery uh, I I I had a lot of fun with um with the idea of of really creating something unique as far as the music and horror dynamic that I switch, mm -hmm. but also pay homage to some of my great influences. Um, now, the story itself is, I believe is quite unique because it's not been done before, but the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the horror fan in me uh, was, was having a lot of fun. What can you tell us about your filming locations? So we were filming in Los Angeles yeah. uh, in, uh, in uh, October, November 2019, mm -hmm. so just before the, the, the pandemic. And it was, it was great because, you know, we, I, I've, I've been living now in, in LA for seven years or soon seven years. And we have a whole bunch of people here who we know and who we love and who love working with us. And we felt that for this, we needed to rely on them. And so we went around to find locations around Los Angeles that could talk to us. Um, and you know, from the warehouse that was where we ended up shooting so much of it uh, to even finding a, the, the, the motor home and all, the, all those little moments. Um, it's, it's funny because I don't think that it's necessarily the most recognizable parts of Los Angeles, but those who live in LA will feel they recognize Los Angeles in it, in its, in its real, Um, range of location um, and it's just amazing to be in a place with so many locations available. What should be for you a good IT direction and what can you tell us about your work with Jasmine Savoy Brown, Lady Simmons, James Jagger and Tessa Monroe please? So um, directing actors is, is, a, is a fun process of especially when you've written the material to kind of bounce it's like you bounce it against the wall and if you see if it comes back to you 
Um, so we we spent a lot of time uh, going back and forth, especially because you know I'm born in France. I'm I'm you know I'm my my first language is not English. So when I'm writing in English, I wanted to test the dialogue with them so that they could then we could tweak it to make it sound more natural. Um, so that was amazing to work with people like that to be able to fine tune um, the characters to make them sound better, to make them sound um, like they exist almost. Um, and then our casting director, Amy Renee, uh, suggested uh, Jasmine Savoy Brown, who I knew from The Leftovers. And I was very excited about that. And we met and it was like I had met Alexis. It was crazy. She was, she, she cared so much about the role um, being right, not being cliched and being really, I had written it with kind of open questions so that she could meet me there and we could really uh, bring the character to life together. And, and oh my, it was that first meeting. She, we always joke who was more nervous. And I can tell you, I was more nervous. And I, it was, after that, we were, it was a partnership and it was really, I'm, I'm very lucky. And similarly, Lily is an actress I've followed for a while. I, I, I've seen her work in, you know, Banshee and Ray Donovan. I see her in Westworld and, and you know, she, uh, Bone Tomahawk, love that movie. And, and so I, I wanted to work with her for some time and, and uh, it worked out, so it was great. And the connection she had with Jasmine immediately, um, the first time they met, showed me that that was, again, lucky for me to see two actors who are supposed to be so close in the story immediately having this connection. Um, and similarly, uh, James Jagger, who I had seen in vinyl, I was really interested in because, you know, I knew he was in bands and I knew he was, he had a connection to create a character um, that was really about himself. You know, Duke is, really draws on the characteristics of James you know, very laid back and 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 amicable and um, and yeah, it was it was all a lot of fun and then you know and then we met Tessa later on to play De Detective Fuentes and and it was it was it was fun because she she really wanted to make um, to make the her detective story work. In this specific time, how it is difficult to create a movie and to find some funds to do it. So. Um, so we were lucky to shoot the film before um, okay. b before COVID. So that that was one thing that you know um, we were extremely lucky. Even when we did a, an extra day of shoot in February 2020, it was before the world shut down. So we got lucky. But uh, having said that, COVID did affect our post production, um, and you know we had to we had to to work remotely, and we had to create all new systems to make it work. Uh, we also had moments where members of our crew uh, that we were that were on sometimes in other parts of the world uh, also contracted COVID, so we had interruptions like that. Um, it's also uh, difficult when you're when you're uh, organizing distribution and finance and such because everything is remote and it's it's hard to have the human contact. Um, so it just demanded more effort and it demanded that we try harder um, and not let anything stop us. And, um, and, you know, even though it took a little longer than we expected, um, it worked out beautifully because we ended up at South by Southwest and Brussels and, and Fantaspo. And, and even though it's virtual, which is obviously sad because I wish I could be with audiences, I, um, I'm still incredibly, I feel lucky. I feel very lucky. Which are for you the good ingredients to create a good thriller or horror movie? Characters. Characters, characters, characters. I, I feel that sometimes um, there's this almost difference between thriller and horror that is how disposable the character is. You know, you have horror movies where they give you a little bit of backstory and a bit of sense, but they don't want you to care too much because they're going to take them away from you. And in thrillers, we obviously, there's a, there's a lot of, of focus. Now, Sound of Violence is kind of both. It's a, it's a horror thriller. So I wanted it, but I wanted it to be a character story with strong, strong characters, and I wanted to be with uh, the villain, if you will, and 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 that's just because I care so much about um, understanding the villains in horror movies that I wanted to create something um, that tapped into that. Um, I think that um, obviously horror is also about timing; 
It's about uh, cinematography. And again, Daphne uh, King Wu, our cinematographer did a fantastic job. And it also, it matters to have very good effects. Practical effects are very important. I love practical effects. I'm extremely obsessed about the way blood looks on screen. Um, and Robert Bravo, who I call my blood wizard, is uh, knows very well that I care a lot. And so I think, you know, the great thing about horror movies is that they are experimental platforms to do things that other genres do, or do not dare to do. And I think the main ingredients uh, as well for, for, for horror movies is visions that are not necessarily, uh, do not have the handbrake on. They just go for what they go for. Um, and it's, uh, it's a risk it's, and it's worth taking risk to make good horror movies. Can you tell us which part of your inspiration for this movie come from your love for music? Because music is very important in this movie. Absolutely, all of it. I mean, you know, it's uh, it's first of all, you know, the 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 movie is a, is a, is the story of an artist, and I'm the son of an artist. My father is a painter. My grandfather is a painter. I grew up surrounded by artists, um, and I met many artists. My first film. Uh, is a conversation with Julian Schnabel. My first few films were all about art artists. So the artist part of it was important. Now here in this, in this case, the musicians, the artists are musicians. Um, and, you know, for five years when we made 808 and we, we went into studios with people like the Beastie Boys and Pharrell Williams and all those amazing artists, Phil Collins and such, it was just, I could see the passion they put in producing music and And I felt that this journey needed to really tap into that. And I was a DJ once, not a very good one, um, but I knew music. I knew not how to make music, but I knew, you know, all sorts of music. The reason why I kept being DJing in, 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 in clubs and parties was because of the music I played, not because of the way I played it. Again, I was not very good, but I knew my tracks. And so um, I'm, I, I'm very obsessed with beats. So the, the, the idea of starting from there and building upon them to create this whole story was very, very important. Um, and, and similarly, for the music around the film, we had to be uh, very ambitious and, 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 and love music enough to try to, to, to do music with non-musical elements and to use musical instruments as, um, as contraptions and, and, and weapons. And so this is where as well, my, my collaboration with uh, our lead composer, Jakob Maninen, or our, or our senior sound designer, um, Yussi Tegelman, and mixer as well, uh, you know, was really important. And then, you know, we brought on Alexander Burke, Omar El Deeb, um, to really create something, the a big, bold, um, and ambitious experiment that needed to work. And, um, and that's out of, all of that is out of love for music. What was the most difficult scene for you to shoot and why? The most difficult scene, I would say the finale. Now, without, without getting into spoilers, is obviously we're in a big open space on a beach and, um, and it's, there's a lot of extras. There were a lot of things. There were a lot of noise. We had planes flying over. We had all sorts of things. So it was, we had to wrangle this whole thing. Um, But, um, but funny enough, I would say maybe the trickiest was the art gallery. The art gallery was very tricky because it's a, it's a, it also, we had extras and we had a whole, the, the, it was very specific what we were trying to do. Um, and, uh, and that made it extremely, because this is where my demands of practical effects were really high. And so we had to be, so I was really pushing everybody to be on top of their games to do it. And I'm very, very lucky because everybody pushed it as, as far as they could to make sure it worked. As a lot of oral movie, can we have a second for this movie? Maybe later? Maybe, I, uh, I, I will not say yes or no. There's a, there's a, you know, this is the thing. It's, it's a universe that I started with, with Alexis. I think it's, a, it's something that, raises a lot of questions. And um, if the audiences demand it, there are more ideas. They are part of the script that I wrote that I had to take out that may possibly open new doors. Um, so the answer is maybe. In watching your movie, I think a lot about the master of horror as John Carpenter, Wes Craven. 
Can you tell us which movie director has the most important impact in your work? I will say that George A. Romero is the reason I love horror. Okay. But I would say maybe Sam Raimi and Stanley Kubrick yes. are, are the reason I'm, I feel allowed to push the stories the way I push them. What can you tell us about the Royal Agreed special effect in this movie? So the special effects, um, you know, and the practical effects again are, are, are sort of a, a whole, you know, buildup of, um, of, of challenges that we had to take on because I'm, again, I'm very, very obsessed with the way everything looks, but, um, but not just on the blood and the, 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 the gruesome part, but also uh, creating the synesthesia, the colorful environment that we created for Alexis. Um, that started from the cinematography with, with the lighting team working with Daphne to bring the lights from all the way from behind to as well projecting onto Jasmine. And then we could add digital effects to, to create um, the real full environment with the lights kind of breaking all, of, all around. Um, the film is, I would say, is all is like on the on the um, the gruesome part. It's about eighty percent practical, twenty percent uh, digital. On the on the lighting, it's uh, it's a kind of a half half. But um, but the the work was similarly like with the music. We are it, it was a big bold experiment, and we needed to to really push every part. And this is where I surrounded myself with a crew of people who are extremely good at what they do. I'm frankly the least qualified person on set, but uh, I got to work with them and they, you know, they brought it and they brought this amazing result. Can you tell us some more about your company, you know, films? Sure. So uh, it's born out of the UK. It was just called, you know, um, we started off in 2004. We, uh, we started off as a, as a creative production company working for brands and the, we, one of our first gig was filming Fashion Week and then we were shooting music videos and doing videos for like L'Oreal and Durex and all sorts of things. So we were a commercial company. Nice. Um, and then in 2008, we did our first original documentary, which is a, a conversation with Julian Schnabel. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and from there, we, I kind of got the bug of making original content. Um, we kept going with, with a lot of, um, of commercials, but then um, in 2014, where we were really in the later stages of, of making uh, 808, um, I felt that it was time for me to let go of the marketing side and to really fo fully focus on, on films. And this is where we moved to the US and, um, and it became You Know Films. Uh, in my last question, which are your current projects? So I'm working right now uh, on uh, a horror movie based on Nordic folklore and Nordic origins. Um, I'm very excited about that. I'm writing it right now. Um, I'm also in talks to direct um, a, a film, uh, a, a bit more of a drama actually, although it, it, it has a horror twist to it. It's, it's actually more of a drama. Um, so that's very early days. And then, um, and then, yeah, I have about three, four projects um, in the works, including maybe a TV show. Merci Alex. Thank you. Have a good day. Bonne journée. Merci. Bonne journée. <laughs>